Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a husband and wife, David and Alexis in their bedroom. Alexis wakes up from a bad dream about their two children. Knowing that his wife is very worried, David tries to calm her down, saying that it was all just a dream. Not long after, their daughter comes into the room to wake them up, and asks her parents to take a shower and get ready, because this day is an important day, when Alexis' family would gather at their house to celebrate her niece's 15th birthday. The celebration is important for the birthday girl because the age marks transition from childhood to adolescence. After having breakfast with his family, David rushes to work at an electronic store, where he hires his cousin, a woman named Lupe. However, he is often annoyed with her, because she throws wild parties with her friends at the shop, making the place a mess. He threatens to fire her, but she doesn't change her behavior. Not long after, a man named Creeper arrives there. Creeper is David's best friend and partner in work. When they are about to leave, a group of thugs arrive, led by Victor, a gangster who had just been promoted. Despite being the chief gangster, Victor looks submissive and disdainful of David and Creeper, as both are known to be the most dangerous gangsters in the area. Victor tells them that his gang is often bullied and belittled by other gangs, and asks them both to solve the problem. As usual, Victor hands over the tax dues to them, as it is a must for local gangs in the West, if they want their businesses to run smoothly safely and under control. David then emphasizes that all local gangs in the West must submit to them, obey them, and submit a tax contribution of 30% of the total profit every month. They are the tax collectors and law enforcement officials, who collect some of the business profits of 43 local gangs in the West for their boss, the wizard, who runs his sprawling criminal enterprise from behind bars. If anyone disobeys or plans a rebellion, then they don't hesitate to slaughter them. After that, David and Creeper visit David's uncle, Louis, to confirm the payment that had been made by Victor. While the wizard was in prison, Louis took over his powers temporarily. He runs his business, including setting tax dues and tax collection due dates for all the gangs in their area, while David and Creeper collect gang tax payments, scattered throughout the city. On the way, while they are doing their job, David always talks about his happy little family, and makes fun of Creeper, who is still single at his mature age. However, Creeper doesn't seem interested in committing to any woman, even though David often sets Creeper up with some nice women he knows. They arrive at the headquarters of the gangsters, and immediately collect the tax due of 30%, according to what had been determined. The gangsters look scared and submissive to David. Especially after he threatens to chop off their heads, if they don't obey his order to stop disturbing Victor's gang. While visiting the headquarters of other gang members, they see a man from a gang called Bloods being tortured, for sleeping with the gang member's girlfriend. However, David instead orders them to release the man, because the kidnapping and torture would trigger a war between the gangs, that would actually cost both sides a lot. Hearing this, the gang members finally understand and obey his orders. They then drive the man to the Bloods headquarters, where they later meet the group's leader, a man named Bone. David tells Bone that what happened to one of his men was personal, and had nothing to do with power or business between gangs. After getting an explanation from David, Bone thanks him, because if such a trivial thing causes a war, their business would be disrupted and suffer huge losses. They continue their work and visit a gangster, who uses his clothing store as a cover to run an illegal business. Seeing their arrival, the man immediately hands over the cash of monthly tax dues. However, the man says things that enrages Creeper to the point where he points a gun at him. David cuts them off and calms Creeper down, telling him not to act hastily. David then gets a call from his wife, who asks him to come to a clothing store immediately. It turns out that Alexis had asked her husband to intimidate the shop owner, who was reluctant to sell the dress to her niece, even though her niece really likes the dress and wants to wear it on her birthday. Without thinking, David immediately complies with Alexis' request, so that her niece gets the dress she wants. After that, David and Creeper return to continue their work until it is completed. That night, when David and Alexis are counting all the money that they had collected from the gangs, they immediately realize that the money that Victor had deposited did not match the predetermined amount, and is still $20,000 short. David gets instantly angry, but Alexis tries to calm him down. That night, David and Creeper immediately go to Victor's house, to confront him for disobeying the rules. Victor tells his wife to take the remaining money hidden in the refrigerator. When David is about to shoot Victor, he confesses that he needs the money to pay for his daughter's leukemia treatment. Victor then shows some photos of his daughter being treated at the hospital. David, who is also a father, understands the problems faced by Victor, decides not to take the money, and tells Creeper to get out of there immediately. On the way home, David gets a message from his uncle, telling him to collect tax dues of $200,000 from a gangster named Venom right away. Without thinking, 
they rush to Venom's place. Arriving there, they are greeted by a woman named Gata, who immediately takes them to meet Venom. Seeing their arrival, Venom takes out a wad of cash as tax contributions. However, when Creeper is about to take the money, Venom stops him, saying that the money is not for them. Soon after, a man named Conejo enters the room, and declares that Venom will only pay taxes to him from now on. Conejo also says that soon all gangsters in the West will pay taxes only to him. Hearing this, David tries to remain calm, and invites Creeper to get out of there, because the place is full of armed Conejo henchmen, and they won't be able to win against all of them. On the way home, Creeper looks annoyed and excited, because he had been waiting for a fierce battle that might happen soon. He seems to really miss the times when they often got into fights, because lately, he feels bored with his work. However, David asks Creeper to remain calm, and devise the perfect strategy to deal with Conejo, who is not a random person, but the leader of a criminal organization that controls the East. They then meet Louis, and tell him everything that happened at Venom's place and Conejo's involvement. Louis says that all gangsters in the East are very submissive and afraid of Conejo, because he is a very cruel and dangerous man. Conejo used to be very submissive to the wizard, but after wizard was imprisoned, he took action and wanted to dominate the entire West. David suggests that they slaughter Conejo and his henchmen. But instead Louis wants to hold a vote on whether they will attack Conejo and his henchmen, or make peace with him. When David and Alexis throw a big party at their house to celebrate Alexis' niece's birthday, Louis arrives, and tells David that he and Conejo will meet, where Conejo would apologize for disturbing their peace, and promise to leave the West soon. Hearing this, David is relieved, because there will be no bloodshed like he had been worried about. After Louis leaves, David dances with his wife and has a great time. However, around midnight, Gata unexpectedly arrives at the party, and asks David to check his cell phone, before telling him and Creeper to go to a nightclub. Once there, they meet up with Conejo and Gata. David immediately asks the whereabouts of his uncle, to which Conejo tells him that he had killed Louis, and shows them his severed head. David is trying to contain himself, even though he looks very angry. Conejo offers to cooperate with them, and promises a much bigger profit if they both agree to join his gang. He then clenches his fist, and asks David to kiss all the rings to acknowledge that he has joined Conejo's group. It is clear that David doesn't want to do that, and ignores Conejo's request, then immediately leaves with Creeper. Their refusal turns out to be a hard slap for Conejo. The next day, they gather the gangsters who are still loyal to them, and devise a plan to attack Conejo and his henchmen. However, in the middle of the meeting, Gata and Conejo's henchmen carry out a sudden attack, so the gangsters try to save themselves, including David, who is worried about the safety of his family. On the other hand, Conejo's henchmen manage to slaughter all of David's men, and capture Creeper. Meanwhile, David rushes to escape, and picks up Alexis at work, intending to take her to safety. On the way, he gets a video call showing Gata hammering Creeper's leg, and Conejo stomps him to death. David looks furious, but he can't do anything to help Creeper. David and Alexis then pick up their children at school. He takes Alexis to a hotel to secure her, where she asks him not to fight Conejo after all that happened. He complies with his wife's request, and promises to take his family away, and start a new life. But before that, he has to do a few things, including sending their children to his sister Delia, because it is pretty safe there, and going to Lupe's house to get something. He arrives at Lupe's house, and asks her to get out of there as it is not safe. He goes into the backyard and starts digging, to find the nearly $2 million in cash he had stored there. Lupe then asks where he got that much money. He reveals that the money resulted from a robbery he did with Creeper, nine years ago. After putting all the money in the suitcase, he rushes back to the hotel to meet Alexis. However, he is taken aback when he learns Alexis has died. Racked with deep sadness and grief, he receives news that his children have disappeared. Conejo then calls David, and gives him two hours to come to him with the ransom. In a state of urgency, David goes to see Bone, and says that all his henchmen have died, because Conejo intends to dominate the West. Not only that, but he also tells Bone about his wife and children, so he had no other choice but to go to him for his help to save his children. Bone is also willing to help David, and gathers his minions to attack Conejo. David Bone and the Bloods gangsters attack a drug house, kill Conejo's henchmen, interrogate one of Conejo's men, dragging his face on the ground from a moving car, and kill him after discovering the location of David's children. They finally arrive at the scene, and find his children safe, with no one there except Conejo's grandmother, who tells him where Conejo has been hiding. At the hideout, David strangles a guard, while Bone is almost arrested, but manages to kill two of Conejo's men. David then breaks into Conejo's room, where he kills Gata. 
David and Conejo then engage in a fierce battle. At first, David is pressed and seriously injured by Conejo, but he manages to turn things around, and brutally kills Conejo. Bone, who manages to survive, takes David away from there. When Bone suggests to David that he treat his wound, David instead asks him to step aside and contact Wizard, who is none other than his father. David tells Wizard all that has happened, but Wizard instead congratulates him for having succeeded in becoming the ruler of all the mafia in Mexico, after killing Conejo. However, David apparently refuses to follow in his father's footsteps, and hangs up. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.